Good evening. My name is Robert Dickey, and I'm the instructor for the course Korean Government and Politics at Gemyeong University in Daegu, South Korea. This video replaces the regular class meeting scheduled for Thursday morning, May 13th, 2021. Our topic in this video is local finance, that is, the income and the expenses for local government in South Korea. Generally, when we're talking about income, we're talking about things like taxes, fees, and excises. And so a piece of this video will talk about taxes, fees, and excises and how we collect those. But we're also going to be talking a little bit about how money is spent and where the money comes from in terms of coming from higher level government, along with how money is typically spent by government. So much of our talk is going to be directly from the book Local Government and Public Administration in Korea, the Lagodi book as we refer to it, starting on page 70 or if you're looking at the PDF file that would be PDF file 79. Uh, or here we are on PDF file 78 which is just the introduction to part 3 finance of the local of Korean local government so we scroll down to page 70 and it says overview of Korean local finance okay so again as always we remind you that in Korea local local government refers to the two levels which are below the central or national government. That is the provinces and the metropolitan cities, the Do and the Gwangyukchi. And then below them, the counties or Gun, the sub cities or typically called districts or maybe you could call them boroughs, such as Gu in Korean. And then we have the local cities, the smaller cities that are inside the provinces, just like counties are usually inside the provinces. And those are called also Shi. In my language, I call it Kunyang Shi, or basic or ordinary, everyday, common, not special cities versus the Gwangyukshi or the metropolitan cities which are at that higher local level. Okay, so it, when we talk about local finance, maybe the first thing to talk about is budget and accounting. In your personal life, you probably do what is called single entry accounting in your head, in your checkbook, that means money comes in, you write it down. More money. Increase to the bank. And when you spend money, money goes out. Simple expense. And until a few years ago, local government did this. And it was called a cash basis. Cash basis means I only count money as it comes in and as I spend it. It's very simple, it's very practical, it's very useful in your own life. However, it misses some important aspects. And one aspect of single entry accounting that we need to worry about is our debt. What do we owe? If I promise to give you money tomorrow, if you give me money today, when you give me money today, in single entry accounting, suddenly my value is higher. And I might spend all of it today because I forgot that I have to give you money tomorrow. But in double entry accounting, we keep track of more information. And in an accrual, accrual, A-C-C-R-U-L, 
AL accrual system, we recognize that not everything is instant, not everything is immediate. There will be things that I have to pay in the future. There are things that people might pay me in the future. I'm working today. My payday is the 15th. So I worked today, but I didn't get paid. Well, on a cruel basis, I know in my mind, oh, I earned another $70 today. I got paid $70 today. I won't see the money until the 15th, but in my mind, I know that I earned some value. So that's a real simple way of thinking about the accrual system and double entry. But until a few years ago, local government in Korea only worked on single entry. So it was really hard to know where we stand outside of how much cash is in the bank today. All right. So that's kind of what we're talking about in the accounting systems. As we read here, it says the budgets of Korean local governments are prepared by the executive branches, that is the mayor, and determined by the legislative branches, that is the city council. So the mayor's office makes a proposed budget, the city council approves the budget, and then as we said in the last class, the mayor then has the power to spend the money that's in the budget or perhaps to not spend the money. The mayor could say, well, we have one million dollars available for publicity for our city, but I think that's too much. So we're only going to spend seven hundred thousand dollars in the budget. We'll have three hundred thousand dollars left over. But what the mayor cannot do is say, I want to spend that $300,000 to have a big party. Because the city council decides how money can be spent. The mayor only can decide, spend the money or don't. But again, the mayor prepares the basic plan and the city council approves it or changes it. Okay, so we've got a rough budget that the mayor designed, the council approved, and the mayor spends on. We have an accounting system that says, how did we spend the money, what money's coming in, what money's going out. Boom, finished, right? We just did local finance. Well, not quite. Next, I want to tell you uh, a piece of honest truth. And the honest truth is, many students of government hate studying finance. First, I'll get my numbers here. First, it's a little difficult. It's a lot of numbers. Second, it's a lot of rules, especially in the Korean finance system where students are taught to memorize rules. Third, it just doesn't feel exciting. It's like all those bookkeepers and accountants out in the world. We usually think they are the most boring people. But they don't think so because in their mind, they're looking at this piece of paper that says how much money is being spent, and they can see in their mind the activity, the event. So they're able to visualize beyond just a few words and a few numbers. Me, I'm not a lover of finance. Okay, so local government finance consists of two types of accounts, two types of financial systems. One is the general system and one is the special system. Just like last week we talked about general public servants Ilban Gongmuan, and then special public servants, meaning they got hired under a special class or they do a special type of work, so we can't treat them as general or ordinary. So the general activities in governments are funded under the general account. Kind of makes sense. 
That means that most of the government's activities are financed, are funded by the general account revenues. When something is special, for example, it's a very, very long-term program and it needs a very stable funding, it doesn't need to be changed a lot, or there are certain laws or rules that say this activity can only be funded from special monies, then we create special accounts. And each special account is special. It has different rules. That's why it's not in the general account. And if we have four different special accounts, because we have four different rules, we have to manage each separately. We can't mix them. So we, we simply say general account and, and special accounts. But in fact, we typically have one general account with some categories, but money can be moved easily. And then we'll have many special accounts, many special accounts. All right, so as this book says, around the year 2000, uh, the finance system changed to accrual and changed from single entry bookkeeping to uh, double entry and from cash basis. In this book, which is from 2000, uh, 16 they said, we're still waiting to see if it has really made a big change. All right, local public finance. As we've mentioned many times, Korea is not a federal system, but a unitary system. A couple of impacts from that are that the national government can tell the local governments what they can do and can't do. The national government can control local finances in many respects. And that local governments do not have much autonomy especially financially. Uh, we've spoken in the past about 30% autonomy in local government from the Japanese case, the Korean case is similar. 30% autonomy meaning that 30% of the revenue at local government is local revenue, which gives them 30% freedom to make choices. The other 70% of revenue coming from the national government means the national government can make the rules. Well, this book offers a few other statistics and we're going to look at a few other statistics as well. But uh, each set of statistics is a little different because they're looking at the problem differently. So in Korea, when they talk about the national budget, they are in fact including the central government and the local governments as well as the local education office. So you'll remember that last class we mentioned that the local office of education is independent from the local government. That the uh, superintendent of education does not report to the mayor. And in fact in Daegu for many years, the superintendent of education and the super and the mayor actively disagreed on many things and caused a lot of headaches for some independent schools that had to work with both of them. So in this book, it says the portion of the budget allocated to central government was 56% in 2011. 56% okay. was the largest. Local governments was 33% and local education less again. So here's the chart they gave. Central government, local government, local education. 55, 34, 10 in 2009, 2010, 2011. Not much change. Now we're going to look at some different numbers. As you can see, this website that I'm trying to use is not working out. It was working a few hours ago. But fortunately, there is a thing called the Internet Archive, which is a computer system that goes in and copies web pages. And this website was copied last year in 
2020, May 10th at 8 p.m. and 13 minutes and 47 seconds, something like that. Anyway, from that archive, we can see this page. And it talks about the revenue and expenditure structure by level of government. And this data is a little bit newer. And this data is from the OECD, and it is a comparison of countries. Now, there's two charts here. There's one chart for revenue. That means the money that comes into government from someplace, mostly taxes. And the second chart is how governments spend money. And the, chart, the years are 2017, 2018. Some countries have both years, some countries have one, some countries have the other. And we have bigger pictures here. All right, so I want to point out to you that this is the Internet Archive page. You can see it says Wayback Machine. And the URL is quite long, but inside the URL is the URL of the page that I was trying to access. And it shows it here also. And this shows the date that this page was captured. That's just for your general information. So let's look at this first chart, which is distribution of general government expenditures. Oh, this that's the second. General government revenues. Move it over again. So this is the enlarged image. And we can go to Korea, except I lost my highlighter. Shoot. One moment. So we look for Korea on this chart, and we, whoops, come on, and we circle it. We can see here, central government is the brighter sea green, and it's about 45% of the revenue in Korea for all government. Where did the money come from? About 45% of the money coming in goes to the central government. And the local government brought in from 45 to 80, about 35% of the revenue. And then Social Security, wait a second, that's not right. Seems like it's supposed to be right, that 30, uh, 80, 20% of the money coming into government came in through Social Security. In Korea, that would mean probably pension money and other similar types of funds. Frankly, it doesn't seem very believable. This one is how does government spend money? Now, one thing we have to know is that in Korea, all local is treated the same. Let's take a look at Korea. Korea is... I've forgotten where it is. Here it is. And so it says that almost 50% of money in Korea is spent by central government. And 35% of all money in Korea is spent by local government. What does this mean? Well, it means that we can lie with statistics. Uh, part of the problem is, let's take a look at the United States, and we'll see that about 50% of the money is spent by the U.S. government and 50% is spent by the state government. 
How can that be? Where's local cities and counties? Well, in the United States, in general, because the cities and the counties are under the states by law, all the money spent by the cities and the counties is counted as state money in this OECD collection. So it doesn't tell us the true story. We have the same problem in Korea where we just really can't hardly believe this. So we're seeing some international data about Korea that doesn't make sense. This is why international comparisons are usually a problem. All right, we can close this. We're not going to use this anymore tonight. We have to look at information and then compare it to our best understanding. It's just not really possible to compare Korea with U.S. or even Japan, even though Japan is very similar. We will come back to this taxes and fees in a moment, but we're going back to the PowerPoint. Oh, excuse me, back to the PDF. So what we're seeing here is not working right. Is that over time the central government budget hasn't changed much? But the literature seems to suggest that it is. How is it? Again, numbers change. We, we count money differently. Let's look at it this way. The percent of the budget in terms of spending. The national government, 42.9, 43.7, 42.8. Why was there a bubble? Well, look at the real numbers. 132, 136, 137. The real number is increased. Local government, 133, 133, 136. Change a little bit. Education, 42, 42, 47. So the biggest change was in education. But in reality, we could see that total monies was increasing. Why? Well, 2008 was a financial crisis. A small one it wasn't IMF but it was a financial crisis so that meant there was fewer taxes coming in at the end of 2008 that meant the budget in 2009 wasn't as big and as the economy improved the budgets increased as the economy improves the budget increases so now let's take a look at taxes and fees in a little bit more detail back to the PowerPoint okay Taxes, fees, and excises. We're going to talk a little bit more about these three concepts, but first, let's talk about direct collection and indirect collection. Collection means how do you get it? So direct collection of taxes, fees, and excises means people pay the government directly. And indirect taxes is when the government gets the money through somebody else. Okay, direct, you pay the government directly. Indirect, you pay somebody else. This can be confusing. Why? I work at the university. Every paycheck, the university takes money from my paycheck to give to government. For general insurance a uh, general income tax for health insurance which is a social social security issue okay it goes in the social security budget just like a pension for my national pension but in this case that's considered a direct tax even though the university is taking the money from me to give to the government it's based on my earning directly and the school is just helping government and at the end of the year I have to do my tax report and then if I owe more money I have to give the money to the government directly and if I paid to less the government gives money back to me directly so direct really means 
uh, the people are giving the government directly even if somebody is helping. But indirect taxes, fees, and excises means the government really doesn't control this, but somebody else is responsible to handle everything and then just give the last bit to the government. So take a look at the next picture. Direct, I pay the government directly, even if somebody helps me a little bit. And indirect is when I pay somebody else and they do all the calculations and the paperwork. And I never get involved with government. I only deal with, for example, the store where I pay sales tax. Now in US, the sales tax is added to the price. So if I buy a pen for 1001 in the US, probably I have to pay 7 or 8% sales tax. So I have to pay 1071 or 1081 and the city takes that 71 or 81 and gives it to the government. But in Korea, if I pay a thousand won for this pen, I would have to look very carefully at the receipt to find out that I actually paid 941 for the pen and 61 is for the sales tax that the store will give the government. Okay, so in U.S., the tax is a little bit easier to see for sales tax. But in either case, I don't report to the government. I don't tell the government I paid the tax. I just pay it to the store, and the store does all the paperwork. So the store is the intermediary that does indirect taxes. But with direct taxes, even though my school is taking money from me at the end of the year I have to communicate directly with government and confirm how much I made ask for any changes and then the government either tells me to pay more or the government gives me some money back so direct versus indirect why is this important well at the end of the year whoever owns the house that you live in will have to pay a property tax to government. At the end of the year, whoever earns money has to pay a sales tax to government. Those are direct government taxes. All right. So what's the difference taxes versus, we said fees, and there's also excise. Okay. Taxes are paid for government services, even if you don't use it. Taxes are paid for government services that should help everyone, even if you don't use it, because we all benefit. Okay, so for example, if you get married but never have any kids but live in a house in a nice neighborhood, your taxes are going to help pay for good education. But you have no kids. But because we believe that education benefits all of society, you have to pay an education tax. You have to. In the US, it's included in the property tax that you pay for your house. Schools, safety, health, to some degree roads, and police officers, city hall being open. Those are taxes. Fees are what you pay for when you use it. Fees are what you pay for for your service. So that fee should be connected to the actual cost. It could be a little bit less, it could be a little bit more, but it should be pretty much connected to the actual cost and the fee should stay mostly in that place. So. You want to go swimming in the city pool, you pay an um, admission fee, that money should go to the pool. Or maybe to other recreation. Uh, the children's after school play program might be included in this recreation budget. If you use a city parking garage, 
the money should go to maintaining and improving and building more parking garages. If you drive on the uh, expressway and you pay a fee or you drive on a bridge and you pay a fee, that money should mostly stay into highway, bridge, things of that nature. So that's a fee. And if you never drive, you don't have to pay. If you don't drive on that bridge, you don't have to pay. If I want to drive the country road that's free, instead of driving the expressway that costs money, I have that choice. And when I drive on the country road, it's slower. Maybe it's a little bit less safe. But I don't pay the highway fee. But when I buy gas for my car, there is a tax that I have to pay. Every liter of fuel, there's a tax. But the secret is the tax on the gasoline is something that we will sometimes call an excise or maybe an excise tax. So it's technically a tax, but it acts more like a fee. We can see in a picture of cigarettes, there's a sticker. And if you buy uh, alcohol, you'll see a sticker or some kind of sign that shows that there has been a tax paid. That tax is a kind of excise. Now, what is an excise? Well, as it notes here, not every country agrees on the definition of what is uh, an excise. And very often, we define it as an excise because the government has made a list of things that are excises. For example, the cigarette tax, the whiskey tax, the gasoline tax. And this tax is based on amounts. A package of cigarettes, a liter of gasoline, uh, 500 cc's of whiskey. So if the price goes up and down, you know the price of fuel for your car goes up and down, it won't change because the excise is based on amount, on quantity, not based on price. And generally, whereas in the United States taxes are after the basic price, in the United States, excises are usually included in the price because there's, uh, if the price goes up or down, it doesn't change. But on a tax, if it's 7% of a 1,001 pen, that's 70. But if this pen price changes to 1,101, then the tax changes from 71 to 77 one because it's 70% times 1,100. So there's an easier picture of your excise tax. And we can close that. So we've talked a little bit about taxes and fees. We've talked a little bit about where these taxes and fees come from. Now let's talk a little bit about the case in Korea. Oh, that went fast. Okay, so local government revenue, the income, the money that comes in to local government is in two types. Own source and dependent revenues. Own source means the money that we make, that we get by ourselves. And dependent revenues is money that we get from somebody else. We depend on them. Oh, please give me money. So in the same way, if you're a student, you might have a part-time job. And the more you work, the more money you make. Those are own source revenues. But from time to time, you have to call up mommy and say, Mommy, I need some money to pay for school fees. Please, mommy, give me my school fees money. Or please, mommy, give me money so I can do something. Those will be your dependent.
Local governments can spend local tax and non-tax revenue as they wish. Local money. Okay? The money that they collect from their legal powers, they can spend as they like, mostly. Not completely, because there are laws passed by the national government that says cities cannot spend money on certain things. Non-tax revenues include, a ver include various types of revenues such as charges, fees, etc. Okay, charges and fees we're treating as the same. We just talked about fees. Should be something related to the use, such as a city swimming pool. Revenue sharing comes from the central government. This is a dependent income. But revenue sharing basically says, okay, we're going to, the central government is going to give money to all these local governments based on a couple of factors. How many people live there? Uh, how much other kinds of revenue can the local city make? For example, a city that has lots of factories has the opportunity to charge more money in property tax than if you have a lot of farmers. Susungu has a lot of wealthy people, expensive apartments, their property tax will be more than Dalsangun, which has not so many expensive apartments and lots of farms. So revenue sharing is a way for the central government to share some of their revenues to local governments based on need. Okay? Money needed to meet, to reach, to realize to be successful in their basic administrative task. What is a local government supposed to do? And because there's no rules, when we are talking about intergovernmental transfers or intergovernmental revenue from higher level to local level, the local governments love the revenue sharing. We spend it as we like. We make our budget. On the other hand, in categorical grants, there are rules. And we can see in dependent revenues, ca under categorical grants, there's limited use. Categorical means we, the central government creates certain categories or rules or activities, and they say, you can spend the money for that. We're giving you $10 million. You can only spend it on health programs, support the Bogenso, uh, add doctors, uh, create green zones that create more oxygen, that eat carbon dioxide. Whatever the rule is, the city can only do it for that. So, no, you can't spend this money to build a new library. You want a new library, but you can't use categorical grants to build a new library. But maybe you could spend revenue sharing grants. So. That's kind of the rule there. Here it talks about some of the money in the local governments. Um, how do we divide this? Let's look at the last two years. Local tax money, 34% of all of the money. Okay. Then we have non-tax revenues which doesn't say exactly what it is, but we're going to pretend that it means fees and other things like that. 22% of all of the money used by local governments. Revenue sharing from the central government, free money, about 18%, 19%. And categorical grants where we control how much you can use, 21%. The final revenue is local debt. What is debt? That means borrowing money. So we borrowed money so that we can do something and we'll pay you back next year or year after or year after. For example, maybe we're going to build a new uh, soccer stadium, football stadium in our town, but we don't really have enough money to do it this year. So we borrow money from the bank or maybe from the central government and say, okay, the next four years we're going to pay 25%. 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. But we spent all the money this year. 
because you gave us all the money this year. So this year it's a revenue, but we do have to pay it back year by year by year. So technically it's debt. Okay, the local autonomy, why is this not working right? Interesting. The Local Autonomy Act says that Korean local governments must maintain a balanced budget. That means they cannot plan to spend more money than they get. Notice that debt is possible. So you can put debt into your budget. You can put debt into your budget. But in that debt, you have to have a plan to pay it back. So this year might not be balanced, but in the longer term it is. And every time a city wants to go into debt, they have to get permission from the central government. So how's the money spent? Well, the biggest part of local government is social welfare. Social welfare is a very broad term. It includes things like the library, support for the senior citizens program, Maybe the local government decides to give money to the Yuchiwan or Riniji, or maybe they don't. There's money coming from the central government. The central government might have categorical grants to support kindergartens and preschools. And then the city is just spending that national money. They don't really have a choice. If they don't spend the national money, they have to give it back. And they can only spend it for, for preschools, for example. Uh, child care for women who work okay if your family income is low and the woman is working then the child care could be cheap or free but if the family makes a lot of money then not okay. not don't qualify for the for the city support so the biggest part of local government spending of money is social welfare how do we spend money well here's a chart General administration, nothing special, but we need it to make city government go. Public safety, now that's not the police, because remember, police is not local government. Okay. Police is not local government, but there are other aspects of public safety. Education, that's not the uh, chung. that's the other kinds of things that could be spent on education. Culture and tourism, environmental protection, social welfare, health, agriculture and fishery. Of course, some places are going to spend more on that. Some places are going to spend little. If you are in uh, Daegu, you're probably not spending money on fishery. Maybe a little, little if you're building a fishing pond for kids to learn how to fish. Support to industry. Transportation and traffic is always a big item. You can see 13, 11, 12 percent. Territory and regional development, uh, development plans. Daegu has its Easyapolis project, its health center project. That's supposed to be science. That's a typo in their book. Science and technology, and then reserve, saving money for a rainy day. Okay, again, we're not trying to give you the details of finance today because you're not public administration students. It's an overview of the kinds of things that money has been spent on. Okay, so here we go back to the thing I mentioned before about the 30% public finance, 30% uh, autonomy in Japan uh, um, attached to Korea. Well, this book says that local tax revenues make up only one-fifth of total tax revenues. So of all the money collected in taxes in Korea, roughly 20% is local tax. That is, the local government collects the money and therefore they have almost unlimited power how to spend it. On the other hand, again, there are these other grants coming from the central government, quite a lot where in some the use is almost unrestricted but in others the categorical grants the government can be very strict how it's spent okay but 
again, roughly 20-21% of local, of, of all the taxes collected in Korea are collected and controlled by local governments. And because of the rules in the Korean government, the Constitution of Korea explicitly, exactly states, stipulates, says that tax items and rates must be determined by laws enacted by the National Assembly. Laws about taxes have to come from the National Legislature. This means that local councils cannot introduce new taxes or change local taxes. So, Susungu can't say uh, we want to build a new sports arena and so we want to collect extra taxes. They can't do it, it's illegal. Yeah. Furthermore, as they point out, as we mentioned, local governments suffer from unfunded mandates. A mandate means the national government says, you have to do this, local government. Okay? And in many cases, the national government gives money for local government to do that. But sometimes the national government says, local government, do that. But they don't give them money. This mandate must do. Whoops. Wow, this really doesn't like this. This mandate says must do. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's unfunded. Oh my gosh. It's unfunded. We didn't pay you any money, but you got to do this. For example, the Korean national government decided to reduce the income tax. Okay, There was a global recession in 2008. The national government reduced the income tax rate. Well, the tax rate isn't just the basic income tax that is like 27% uh, or it you know, depends how much you make, they make a rate. But there's also a secondary tax that is connected to that, the resident tax. The resident. That's for local. It's one-tenth. So if you pay 27% tax to the central government, you also pay 2.7% additional to local government. But if we change the tax rate from 27% to 25% on the national level, that means we also change the tax rate from 27% or 2.7% to 2.5% on the local level. And, that's already bad, they also changed the revenue sharing. They decreased it. So the local governments got hit twice. First, the percent re was reduced, and then the kind of free money, the revenue sharing from the central government was decreased. Finally, the central government creates a book, a manual, a guide of how to prepare the local budget. Now, it's not just technical like, uh, you know, put this in this column and put this in this column. It actually says things they can and cannot do. You cannot spend money on this. You can spend money on that. And that can change year to year. These restrictions include you can't spend more than this much money imagine if they said when you are buying bottled water for events you cannot spend more than 501 for a bottle of water maybe that's okay but then prices change over time and now it's very hard to find bottled water in the store for 501. It costs 701. But if the rules still say 501, you can't spend the money. Now that's too easy. Right? That's, that's, that's too easy. 
But the reason the central government makes these rules is because in the past, local governments often spent money recklessly. Korea uses the term moral hazard. Uh, what's this broken here? It's hard to see. Moral hazard. Moral hazard is when you say, well, I can do whatever I want because there's no penalty. I don't have to go to school because professor doesn't check attendance. So you don't go because there's no penalty. That's moral hazard. So if the city council says, well, if it costs more to buy water, we don't care because, hey, it's national money anyway. So the national government says, we're going to avoid that. We're going to make strict rules about how much you can spend, where you can spend, when you can spend. So unit prices, such as 500 won for a bottle of water, or how much money you can give to the local senior club, these kinds of restrictions come from the central government. It reduces local autonomy. And sometimes, we have to know, sometimes restricting local autonomy is a good thing. Sometimes it's a good thing. How much, when, where, people can argue. All right. We're just going to touch this. We're not going to go far. Local revenues. Where do local governments get their revenue? It's already 51 minutes. Well, in general, most local revenues come from tax. Okay. Now we can see here that uh, about 10 years ago, the tax system changed for local government. And it was a simplification. Let's look at the new system. What, what are the 11 tax items for local government? Acquisition tax. When you get something new, you might have to pay a tax. A purchase tax. Property tax. Every year, if you own a house and it's worth $1 million, you have to pay your 3% every year. That would be, what, uh, $30,000 on a $1 million house. And every year, you have to pay it. But an acquisition tax, you only pay when you get it. When you buy it or when it's given to you. Only one time. After that, you keep it. So when you buy a house, you pay an acquisition tax, and then every year you have to pay a property tax. Registration or license tax. For example, to register your business or to register your car. Then we have these other things, okay? Automobile tax for the car. This automobile tax includes gasoline tax or motor fuel tax. You use high value, key value, that's gasoline. You use diesel, there's a tax. Some of that goes to the local government. Residence tax, we already said, is 10% of the national income tax. There's can be a local income tax versus the residence tax. I'm not really sure how these are different. Uh, the income tax is based on your income taxes. The resident tax is more of a fixed rate. Local consumption tax. Uh, if you buy certain things in the city, okay, tobacco tax, this is a big one. When you buy cigarettes, you are supporting your local government. Leisure tax, again, I'm not sure how that works in Korea. I'm not a specialist on Korean local taxes. Local education tax, yes, you pay that uh, each year. So it says different local governments have different tax items. That is the upper level local government, the provinces and the metropolitan cities, get different tax than the lower level Gu, Gun, and Kunyangshi. Okay. What it says here, provinces of ordinary, da, 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 da. So here's how it works. Ordinary tax and objective tax. The objective tax is more specific. Okay. These are on the province level, city county level, but again, uh, metropolitan cities are different Don't worry about the rates. And that's pretty much what we're doing tonight. Ah. Tobacco consumption tax. If you bring in tax tobacco into the city, you have to sell it. It's really more of an excise tax. Okay? 
it's an excise tax. So each shop, when they bring cigarettes in or other kinds of tobacco in, they have to pay. And this is a chart in your book that talks about where the money comes from, how it's spent. That is pretty much it. This is a similar design to what we saw 10 pages earlier. It's turned sideways and it breaks it out according to specialties. So instead of talking about taxes, we're talking about basically fees and excises and where the money goes. Current revenues and temporary revenues. Temporary, right? short term, we know that. Special accounts, enterprise and non-enterprise. Enterprise sounds like a business. Okay, that's basically what we're talking about in the fees and taxes. Don't worry about borrowings. It's much more detailed than you want. Uh, local revenues, we're done, okay? This is what we're gonna do tonight. We don't need to do more in this book. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to final exams. I do want to remind you that you have two homework assignments so far in this semester. They were both supposed to be done before I accept late work. If you want to get a B plus in this class or better, you have to complete all the homework. If you don't do the homework, you can't get a B plus, all right? It's that simple, gotta do it. They're not that hard. You can do them in Korean language, but you gotta do them. That's all for tonight. Thank you very much. We'll see you in class next week, Monday afternoon. And then of course, next week, Thursday is a holiday, so no class next week Thursday. See you next week.